Hey, thanks for clicking on the video. I'm here to share with you five tips that's going to help you get a first class in your dissertation. Roll the clip. All right, so a little bit about myself. I went to the University of Plymouth. I graduated with a first class honours in biomedical science and I averaged 82.5% overall on my degree and you have to average 70% to get a first class mark. After completing my biomedical science degree, I've gone on to work in the NHS and now I've gone on to best. So into the tips and stay to the end for some extra discussion. So number one, get organized and start as early as you can. My advice would be to do what I did and produce a Gantt chart with set deadlines on when you need to complete the work for each section. This way, you have also more time to make more drafts, which means higher grade. Number two, look at some exemplar work. Now this is really, really important. So in order to get a first class mark, you need to have some real critical analysis in your discussion section. And if you don't, haven't seen what critical uh, analysis is, you need to look at some exemplar work to get that in your head. Number three, make the most of your tutor. Now while each tutor is very very different in the way that they approach their students that they've taken on to do dissertations with, it's vital that you know in your head what your tutor wants from the dissertation because ultimately they'll be the one that's marking the piece of work and therefore it's probably good to know what they want. Therefore feedback is king. Every time you get some feedback from your tutor, that's going to help you increase your mark. And that's what we're looking for. Number four, figures. Now my tutor let me into this, this secret. Figures are vital to get the higher marks in a dissertation. You need to have very clear uh, and easy to follow figures um, at the same standard that you would expect to find in a paper that you're reading, okay? Not only this, but it's going to help you when it comes to your poster discussion because when you're talking to anyone that's looking at your poster in, uh, that you're discussing your poster with, you can guide them with the figures in your, in your poster. Now in my poster presentation, the lecturers were able to follow my, what I did in my uh, dissertation pretty much just by looking at the figures. And finally, number five references. Now I'm sure you've probably a lot of references by now but you must get all of your references right in your dissertation. Check them, check them again and check them once more and if you're having problems uh, referencing you can use online resources such as Cite Me Right or ask one of your friends on your course or, or seek help from the university because it's important that you know how to reference when you leave university, whether you go on to do more uh, research or you come on to uh, take the medicine track like myself. It's important that your references are up to date and a lot are within the past five to 10 years. And for, for my dissertation, I had a lot of the references were probably within the last two years. Now I'm gonna talk to you about a few extra tips. So the abstract is probably best to be left last. This way you have a holistic view of the story you're trying to convey um, and therefore it will kind of piece itself together. Just start writing. You need to get over that barrier. Stop what you're doing. Actually, finish this video. And then get onto your writing and just write down everything, everything you can. Your first draft is going to be rubbish. It's going to be shit. And you just need to get over that. It's important to, to know what you know and what you need to go and read to find out or ask help about. Some bits of dissertation you, you, you might not be able to do yet. For example, your discussion if you've not got re your results. And you, it can make you feel a little bit lost. And that's okay. That's okay. I got 85% in my dissertation. But I felt lost. There was times I felt lost, I promise you. In the introduction, it's super important that you lay out the framework of where your research sits 
in the research that's already out there and how people in the future can use your research in the future. So for my example, for, for example for me, I, uh, I looked at Plasmodium falciparum's life cycle and identified upregulated, downregulated proteins um, at certain life cycle stages and I identified novel uh, proteins that could be uh, uh, vaccine targets. So therefore the next progression in, um, so therefore the next progression uh, in the research would be for someone to go ahead and test whether they actually work in, in animals, for example. And if you, this is for your biomedical scientists out there, if you can get bioinformatics or, uh, or statistics into your dissertation, do it. This is extra stuff that you're putting in that's just going to raise your mark. To get that first class, you've got to be, go beyond and above the average student. So just let that. So just remember that when you're putting in those hard hours in the library. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you have any questions, um, leave them down in the comments below or or get out the socials. Um, let me know how you, what you're doing for your dissertation. And if you want more content that's sent that's gonna help you get that first class mark in your degree, or you wanna know about going from biomedical science to medicine, subscribe to the channel. Peace.